Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. This is the podcast The Endurance of Labor Laws. I'm your lovely host Leslie Sullivan. And today is episode 145 and this is part 4 of the National Football League Players Association, also known as the NFLPA. So today we're going to take a look at the 1987 strike and then we will talk a little bit about the financial registration program. But first of all, let me give a big shout out to my listeners because as usual, you guys are awesome. So a big shout out to California, Oklahoma, Texas, New York, Virginia, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, North Carolina, and Minnesota in terms of countries, the United States and the Russian Federation. So the time frame that we are going to be discussing today is going to be from 1983 uh, to 2008. So quite a few many years there. So let's go ahead and talk about this. It says in 1983 Former Oakland Raider Gene Upshaw became the executive director of the NFLPA. During his tenure, he oversaw a player strike, several antitrust lawsuits, and the collective collective bargaining agreement of 1993. So here's the thing, my personal opinion is that this guy was in office way too long. And the reason why that's an issue is because whenever you have someone in charge for that many years and you don't have a change of management, you have lack of new ideas. And you also take a huge risk of having nepotism and favoritism, which will always hinder your organization. Very unfortunate about that. Now, in regards to the antitrust lawsuits that were filed during this time frame, I feel like um, I feel like the NFL players—they're like the dumb kid in class that learned a new fancy word in the dictionary, and now they use that word all the time to sound smart, and sometimes they fool people. That's what happened here. The NFL players and the NFL Association. They learned about antitrust lawsuits and that's how they took people to federal court just so they could make millions of dollars. Some of the lawsuits I agree with, not in terms of making millions of dollars, but to to protect their labor, to protect their work and to not be um pigeonholed by ownership or management. So, there are some lawsuits I agree with, but the majority of them I do not because they found a loophole in the antitrust lawsuits and once they found that loophole again they're like the dumb kid in class that learned a new word and because they're so stupid but actually very crafty they found that new word and now they're going to use it all the time to get their way that is exactly what the NFL did here or excuse me the NFL players did within this association so let's talk a little bit about the 1987 strike It says the NFLPA went on strike for a month in 1987 upon the expiration of the 1982 collective bargaining agreement. The league's free agent policy was the major matter in dispute. Now, I agree with them on this because if they had had the opportunity to have free to have like a free agent, then we would not have the, this labor union and we we would not have this corruption within the NFL. which is costing the american people millions of dollars and you're probably thinking well how is this costing me all this money here's the thing whatever the cost of your ticket is to go to a to an nfl game your your hard earned money is going towards these players making millions of dollars and they don't deserve that money like they're not the cream of the crop in society they're they're just throwing a inflated ball around and getting paid millions of dollars to do so they're not a doctor they're not a lawyer they're not an engineer It's ridiculous and most of them have very stupid college degrees. A lot of them have a business degree. I remember when I was in college um it was just known that if you were too dumb or lazy and uh, to actually go to school but you needed to be in college in order to get a degree or play a sport you you went to the business school. I remember when one of my cousins graduated from college She graduated uh, with a business degree and she's not very smart either unfortunately. I noticed that most of her classmates were football players. I was like, "Wow, if it's that easy to get a business degree, then they obviously aren't very picky." And here's another thing. When I was in school, it was very common for football players, you know, they got special treatment. You know, baseball players, soccer players, they hardly ever got special treatment if any. The the football players, they hardly ever had to show up to class because the college valued their their winning streak more than the student's education. And a lot of these guys should have never gone to college because they were not smart enough to go to school. So a lot of these NFL players that graduated from college, they should have never been allowed in college because they were not smart enough to attend. So hence there's there's a lot of racketeering 
and a lot of greed within the NFL because they start they start targeting these guys when they're young, and that that's a big problem. So it's one of those things that you know the the NFL they very much like to use antitrust lawsuits to get their way, and you know. Antitrust lawsuits are not supposed to be used for greed. You know, the NFL players, they're just using the antitrust lawsuits because they're just like the dumb kid in class that found a fancy word and they're going to use it all the time to get their way. And in this case or in this instance, whenever they're trying to cry wolf all the time, they use the antitrust lawsuits at a federal level because that's where you take it is at a federal level to just get more money. Now sometimes I agree with them sometimes I do not. And you're probably wondering, well, if it's not right what they're doing, how is this how is this allowed? Well, what you need to remember about judges is that every single judge in the United States, I can't speak for other countries because I don't know about other countries' judicial system, but our system here, mind you, it's not corrupt like other countries. We actually have a really good country, but um every single judge in the United States at one point in time was a lawyer. So do you do you really have the most positive positive opinion of lawyers? Are they known for being ethical, legal, moral, um Christian? No, they are not. So here's the thing. Whenever your state has an election, more than likely it's going to be about who to elect to the different judgeships you know within your state. So you need to get out and vote for the judge that you think is best. So be aware of that. So You know the judges that are appointed are those that are at I think it's at the appellate court appellate courts which are appointed by the president of the United States and then the supreme court those are appointed by the president of the United States but they the the supreme court I'm pretty sure is the only one where they get appointed by the president of the United States but then they have to be approved and vetted by the senate so just recognize that every single one of these judges was a lawyer at one point in time do you really trust lawyers So that's why sometimes judges do not make good decisions it's because their background is being a lawyer. So which means they speak out of both sides of their face. So just be aware of that. In regards to the 1987 strike within the NFL uh, PA or the NFL it says the NFL PA went on strike for a month in 1987 upon the expiration of their collective bargaining agreement of 1982. The league's free agent policy was the major matter in dispute and I agree with them on that because They have every right to have a free agent, every right. The league, however, or this time, however, the strike only canceled one week of the season. For three weeks, the NFL uh, staged games, meaning they weren't real, with hastily assembled replacement teams made up principally of players cut during training camp and players left out of work from the closure of the United States Football League two years prior. They were joined by a few veterans who crossed the picket lines including New York Jets defensive end Mark Gastonul, I believe that's French, Dallas Cowboys defensive tackle Randy White, San Francisco 49ers quarterback Joe Montana, and New England Patriots quarterback Doug Flutie, and Seattle Seahawks wide receiver Steve Largent. Given the willingness of the players to cross the picket lines and networks to broadcast the replacement games, Despite a 20% drop in television viewership and even steeper drops in attendance, the union failed to achieve their demands. I'm surprised by this because they cried wolf cried a bit. The strike ended on October 15th, 1987 without a collective bargaining agreement in place. The union filed a new antitrust lawsuit, again they're using a fancy word to get their way, on December 30th asking federal judge David Doty, who again is appointed, uh, to overturn the league's restricting free agent policies. On November 1st, 1989, the Court of Appeals rejected the suit on the grounds that the owners were covered by the labor exemption from antitrust law. I'm kind of surprised by that. The union's next tactic, so they're getting clever and crafty here, in November 1989 was to disclaim any interest in representing NFL players in collective bargaining and to reform itself as a professional organization. So they're getting crafty here and not for not for our good, definitely for theirs because they're practicing greed. Having done that, individual players led by Freeman McNeil of the New York Jets brought a new antitrust action challenging the NFL's so-called Plan B free agency, which gave teams a right of first refusal to sign a player as an unlawful practice under the Antitrust Act. So again, the antitrust acts are being uh, used and abused and manipulated here by the NFL players. 
The players ultimately prevailed after a jury trial on their claims. That verdict, the pendency, or sorry, the pendency of other antitrust cases and the threat of a class action lawsuit filed by Reggie White, then with the Philadelphia Eagles on behalf of all NFL players, caused the parties to settle the antitrust cases and to agree on a formula that permitted free agency. In return, the owners received a salary cap, albeit one tied to a formula based on the player's share of total league revenue. So the players, they want a piece of that pie even though it's not their pie. So the players, they they want a salary, but they also want commission. So they're like a used car salesman. So next time you go shopping for a car, just pretend that person is an NFL player because that's basically what NFL players are doing. The agreement also established a salary floor, minimum payrolls all teams were obliged to pay. So basically, this is no longer acting like a private sector company. They're almost acting like the Soviet Union where a a higher up entity controls everybody's wages, but yet they're trying to combine acting like they're in the public sector and the private sector because yes, they want that minimum salary requirement, but they also want commissions. So they want to have their cake and eat it too, which is not it's not fair and it's not right. It's very uh, very much greed and that is very much immoral. The settlement was presented to and approved by guess who? Judge Doty, who had also heard the McNeil antitrust case in 1993. Now, my personal opinion is that if a judge has previously heard an antitrust case in regards to this, I don't think they should hear the same one or the next one in regards to things like this because I think you have a problem with with nepotism and favoritism and it clouds their judgment. Once the agreement was approved, the NFLPA reinstituted or sorry, reconstituted itself as a labor union, so they're getting crafty, and entered into a new collective bargaining agreement with the league. The NFLPA, sorry, the NFLPA and the league extended the 1993 agreement five times, not surprising there. The final extension came in March 2006 when it was extended through the 2010 season after the NFL players voted 30 to 2. to accept the NFLPA's final proposal. I just wonder if they really wanted to vote that way. <laughs> they probably feared a antitrust lawsuit because they know that the NFL players have found a loophole. I think that loophole needs to be filled in because I don't agree with them using antitrust lawsuits in order to basically screw over, excuse my language, the American people. Because whenever these players make millions of dollars, they're getting that money from you and from me. So they're getting that money from the the cost of tickets, the cost of merchandise, the cost of contracts like with Nike, Adidas and all this stuff. So you're paying that price. So th- these people are not poor, not by any means. Now we're going to talk a little bit about financial um the financial registration program. It says the NFLPA's financial registration program was created in 2002 after a series of many investment schemes targeted at professional athletes. I'm just surprised they did not invent this sooner because they had been having issues way before them. So basically the greedier the NFL players got, the more they were targeted by people that wanted their money. So I mean, yes, that's wrong, but at the same time I don't feel sorry for them because you know these NFL players, they were targeting the American people with their scheme, but going about it via antitrust lawsuits. So I guess, you know, chew your own pill on that one. It goes on to say it aims to provide an extra layer of protection to athletes to protect them from fraud and poor advice. I wish the American people could have that protection, especially from labor unions and trade unions, and provide players with advisors and agents who are pre-screened by the NFL. But here's the thing. Yes, it's a good thing to help protect them, but at the same time, um they're still screwing over the American people by practicing greed almost every single day and every time they have a collective bargaining agreement because It's not it's not right to do what they're doing. I'm all for capitalism, but if you have to be crafty about it, then that tells me you've got some pretty bad intentions up your sleeve. They're basically very uh, manipulative magicians is what they are. Because they're they're not really um I guess I'll just say they're not really good people. And what's interesting is that whenever a scandal comes out in regards to the NFL, um they just found another organization or they found a foundation excuse me and then give to some charity and all that is to them is a tax write off so they don't have to pay as much taxes <clears throat> so needless to say whenever the democrat party is saying that oh it's not the rich they're paying the bulk of the taxes it's it's the middle class or the poor people technically they're right in regards to the NFL very much so 
Because NFL players and those that do business with the, with the NFL, they find loopholes all the time to not pay taxes and to not be held responsible or to be held accountable for their financial behavior, which is usually not appropriate. But yet they always try and find a way to get the federal law on their side. And my question for them is, the federal law belongs to all people. It's not just NFL players. So I wish more consumers would wake up to the fact that they are totally getting gypped by the NFL, by the NFLPA, which is the association that protects the contracts of NFL players, and it's really corrupt. It's really corrupt because you have people that should have never been allowed in college unless they could actually go to college because they're smart enough, but it's rigged. You know, the 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 sporting I guess you could say the sporting world and the sporting industry is totally rigged. Like it's not what you think it is. It's not this honorable entity. I mean, you know, to say that the NFL is a great institution is like saying the Catholic priesthood is a great institution. Look at the things that they do and cover up. I mean, really, like you're probably thinking, well, those two things are not similar. They actually are. Because they're two very powerful entities. that find ways to get out of being held accountable for the bad stuff that they do. That's what I have a big issue with. The NFL was smart because they don't even claim to be religious. So I guess if you want to get away with something, just don't even be religious, if don't claim to be religious and then you can kind of do whatever you want. So the NFL was smart or not the NFL. The NFL players were smart and that they created their own association. Can you imagine what would happen if the if the Catholic priesthood create its own labor union or trade union like create its own association and then had bargaining agreements and then presented that agreement to their parish demanding how much they should get paid <laughs> isn't that funny like that's how stupid it is like it's just like wow so basically the, these NFL players whenever they have these collective bargaining agreements they're basically saying to the American people pay me pay me pay me millions and millions of dollars So I can have houses and hoes basically. That's what I call it, houses and hoes. So, it's like, wow, so do you really want to pay for that? Do you really want to pay for someone else's fancy lifestyle when more than likely they they got offered a scholarship to a college they should have never been allowed to go to because they they probably couldn't pass the ACT or the SAT. And then also they probably didn't have to go to class and they probably players often paid people to go to class for them and to take their their tests for them. then they get recruited by NFL teams that cover up for them so basically you know these guys that play in the NFL they are basically um encouraged to not live a moral lifestyle from the moment they're 18 because that's when they get recruited whether to college or whether to an NFL team Cause one time I was watching football with my family this was several years ago and i noticed how many nfl players had college degrees and it said um what school they went to so i started like kind of keeping tally of where they go to i was like oh so that's the easy school it must not take much to get into that college because that guy went there and sometimes it would tell you um underneath his name like what they majored in and i would just bust out laughing i'm like really he majored in that really i don't believe it It was so bizarre. I just thought, wow. Uh I guess I guess some of these degrees that kids get these days must be easier to get than when I went to school because you know, what's interesting is that when I went to school how to describe this? You had to have some kind of smartness to you. You had to But even then the system was rigged back then because I remember being in class um with some football players and they just sat there and I and you know acted like they were all that in a bag of chips and then they would walk around on campus like they owned it well I guess technically they did because they didn't even have to go to school. They didn't even have to go to class. But I just remember that th- there was I kind of feel like there was more integrity back then than there is today. because i feel like the more this association gets involved in the player's life the, the less integrity there is 
And I think that's very unfortunate because if anything, these men need to be taught how to be gentlemen. They need to be taught how to be good Christian men. And they're not being taught that. You know, they're basically being taught that money can buy anything. And I guess technically that's true if you're a crook. So just be aware of that because I don't think that's a very positive thing to, to train young men in at all. Because they're just going to be takers. They're not going to be givers. So just be aware of that. It's not always a pleasant thing to talk about. But, you know, there, there are so many scandals within the sporting arena and within these, within these industries And it's really unfortunate because if you're actually doing things the right way, then you will make really good money. But if you have to use our federal laws and manipulate basically your contract and manipulate, you know, a team or a company in the private sector, but use federal law to do so, then to me that shows that they have a lack of character. And they don't understand morals and values. And I think that's very unfortunate because these people are well overpaid or way overpaid. They're well paid and overpaid, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But guess what? As the American people, we tolerate it and we allow it. So what does that say about us and our society? We, we put more emphasis on NFL players than doing what's right. You know, we, we, we value what a, a NFL player or a pro athlete says more than what the Bible says about something. I mean, I mean, what does that say about our society that doesn't value um, their soul? They don't value their future. I think that's very sad. And what's interesting is that a lot of these people, they don't, they don't start walking the way of the Christian life until something really bad happens in their life. It's like, you know what? That's not the Christian life. The Christian life means that you walk with God every day. So you have that peace and you have that joy. You know, is God there for you when bad stuff happens? Yes, but God wants to be there for you in everything. You know, what I wish more football players would do is pray before they sign an agreement. And that doesn't mean have your mama uh, pray for you. That means you pray for yourself. Seek wisdom and guidance from God because I think that's the best way to avoid really bad situations. And I, you know, as I said before, I wish every NFL player had a Bible and read their Bible because I guarantee you, if they put God first, the industry would totally change and it would be so much better. And they would have less problems and they would actually be the, the good role models that they, that they are supposed to be, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because at this point, I don't think they're very good role models. To me, they're just like used car dealerships or used car salesmen. It's just they, they're wearing a different outfit. They're not wearing the cheap tie or the tacky pants. They're, they're wearing an a NFL uniform. See, I think sometimes what people forget is that integrity is not about what you're wearing on the outside. It's about who you are on the inside and how you manage yourself and your affairs. And I don't mean like affairs like sleeping outside of marriage, which that does happen, but... I'm talking about your personal business, like how, how you handle that. Like, do you handle things with integrity? Because a lot of these players do not understand integrity. They don't understand having good moral character. You know, th there are some football players, <laughs> I wish they were completely kicked out of the league because they, they have purposely hurt people or they have purposely hurt players on other teams Like to the point where they are permanently crippled or harmed or hurt. And they do it intentionally. They intentionally hurt other people on, on the field. That is unsportsmanlike conduct. And why they are allowed to continue to play is beyond me. It's weird. If I was the owner or the manager or the coach, I'd be like, you're fired. We saw what you did. That wasn't just you trying to get the ball or, or protecting the quarterback. Like you, you took it way too far. Because I remember back in the day when I played soccer, and I'll close with this, when I played soccer, it was unheard of for a ref to not kick someone out whenever they would try and slide tackle you, whenever a bad player would try and uh, side or slide tackle you, like to take out your knees. 
Because we, we had a whole lot of bad players here in Oklahoma. We really did, especially within the soccer world. And they were just corrupt. And some of them were girls. And it's like, wow, they were so desperate to win. They were willing to physically and intentionally harm somebody. So that they could win a trophy and be known for winning. I just think that is unbelievably evil. So... Most of the time, whenever I was playing, I was trying to dodge all these stupid Amazon girls that all they wanted to do was hurt you. They didn't care if you became paralyzed. So just know there is corruption in female sports, too. It's not as bad as in the pro athletes, um, male sports, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in local sports as well. So just be aware of that, too. But here's the thing. These local, spo- these local sports are supposed to be character building events and arenas. But you'd be surprised how many kids' parents don't see anything wrong with their kid doing something like that. It was horrible. I was like, wow, those parents really showed their true colors, and this is why their, their kids are not good kids. So, I mean, it, it definitely is a reflection of how someone is raised. who they are around and what they're being taught. It's just really sad. I think in basketball there was more decorum um than soccer because some of the stuff that happened in soccer like it even shocked my mom. She's like, "Are you sure you want to continue to play this?" I was like, "Well, I'll, I'll finish out the season, but you know, after this year, I'm not sure I'm going to play this because instead of being able to enjoy the game, I was having to try and preserve my life which was really sad. It was really sad and unfortunate, but I'm seeing that same um immoral, unethical behavior happening all the time within the NFL. And these people are paid millions of dollars. So it's like they're being paid millions of dollars to be unethical people. Is that really who we want our young people to look up to in terms of being a mentor or someone that they idolize? I would venture to say no. But yet our society is okay with paying them millions of dollars. So I mean we really have no one to blame but ourselves on this because we allowed it. So but that's it for today's podcast. As usual, I pray that you're happy, healthy and whole, that you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.